to be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them, to die, to sleep, no more, and by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance, to dream, ay, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There is a respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor is wrong, the proud man's contumely, the banks of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merity of the unworthy takes, when he himself might disquiet his make with a bare boatkin. Who would fardel spare to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But at the dread of something after that, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscious thought make cowards of us all, and thus the native view of resolution is sickled o'er with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pit and moment, at disregard their currents turn awry, and lose the name of action.